Welcome into the Eagle Communication Sports Update on HutchPost.com. High school, college, pro. We keep you in the know. As always, Glenn Grunwald, I am Darren Dunn. We open up, of course, as we always do, with HCC football. A scary moment for HCC. A couple of great opening drives to go up 14-0. But then, Glenn, with just under three minutes left, they find themselves down seven, and it took some late theatrics from Alvin Kamara. Well, it really did. Momentum was totally on Coffeyville's side, especially when they took the, the tied it up at 28 all. Then I'm kind of sitting there going, like, okay, I just hope we get the, to uh, – to overtime, and then when they went up 35-28, you're thinking, hey, we're going to have to need some dramatics, and boy, did we ever give the ball to number one. That's all you had to do. Under three minutes to play, facing a third down and 12 from their own 35-yard line, a screen pass almost going nowhere. Alvin Kamara finds a will and a way to get down the field for the touchdown to tie the ball game up. He finishes with 219 yards and three touchdowns. After the game, Coach Rhodes at a loss for words, but last night he finally had a chance to collect his thoughts on Dragon Talk. It was a crazy finish, you know, just uh, it was actually fun to be in in the moment a little bit, you know, and to be, uh, you know, at a loss for words, but uh, just pure excitement, pure, uh, you know, energy and and uh, just it was a crazy atmosphere. It was a rush, you know, uh, haven't felt one of those in a while, you know, just uh, to uh, to be struggling like we were at the end of the game and then uh, to really just uh, have some incredible plays made to to win the game was pretty awesome and the sequence of how it all happened is a little bit crazy too um but uh i'll tell you that last uh that last minute of the game was pretty intense crazy finish it was indeed you're down on the sideline glenn what were you thinking well, as they, it all unfolded they took the knee the knee and that kind of surprised me a little bit uh, they had the ball on their on our own four yard line they took a knee miscommunication between the bench and uh, and coach Rhodes regarding the offensive coordinator as what you wanted to do and he was really meaning just hand it off to number one do something safe and let's let's get it to overtime and all of a sudden we're on the three yard line and you give it to Alvin, and he told his offensive line, hold that block for one or two more seconds if you can. And boy, off to the races he went with about a 38-yard pickup. He had to pass to Autry for another 42-yard pickup. And all of a sudden, you're in field goal range with 14 seconds remaining. They're going to run it to the – it's on the right hash mark. They're going to run it to the right anyway to make sure they had an easier field goal. And Caulfield just gave him the seam on the outside, and he takes it in with seven ticks left on the clock. A big, miraculous comeback. It was interesting. Coach Rhodes really didn't even know what to say to the team after afterwards when they gathered around. So it was just, a, it was just a, you have to have a little luck sometimes. And they had it with, against a very good Coffeeville team. He went through a whole swing of emotions from going three minutes left thinking, okay, the Blue Dragons are going to lose the first game of the season. Then, okay, they've tied it up. We're headed for overtime. Then suddenly the Blue Dragons win it in regulation. But still some concern over that pass defense. 43 comple completions on 77 attempts for Brock Gilmore. He throws for five touchdown sets. Records for Coffeeville Red Raven records. Completions, passes thrown, passing yardage. What do you make of this pass defense, and how do the Blue Dragons well, fix it? Well, and I've been worried about that a little bit. But when, when you have 102 snaps go against you and all that many passes, something's going to happen. I, I think they're going to have to tweak it a little bit. Uh, that's been a concern about as whether or not that defensive the secondary can hang in there or not. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the line, linebacker pressure. The front's, the front's got to be put on a quarterback. And, uh, hey, that was just you – know, like we thought that Coffield was going to run the ball more. Not the case. Uh, they're still a good team. We're going to see a lot of people pass against us. They can get a fix, though. Upcoming, the Blue Dragons take on the Bronc Busters of Garden City back home in Gowan Stadium. Of course, at 3-2, and two, Garden City coming off that loss, 45-3 to three over Iowa Western, taking them down. So facing number two and then number five in the nation, respectively, we've seen a lot of teams taking on that task and not faring all too well. We've taken a moment now to take a look around other HCC sports. Here's a look at what happened in volleyball and also soccer. We move now to high school sports. The Salt Hawks now two and three after an overtime win over Mays, 40 to 37. Glenn, you were there. Were you concerned that it took the Salt Hawks overtime to win that moved, one? Moved the ball between the 20s very, very effectively. Uh, they really moved it on Mays. Mays defense wasn't that good, but their offense was stellar. Their quarterback can really sling the ball, and that they did. A uh, situation where it was real similar to the ACC game on Saturday night. All of a sudden, you're you're, you're leading, and all of a sudden, okay, we'll we'll take our chances in overtime. Mays did a good job in the last two minutes to get down and tie up the football game, send it in overtime. But then they settled for a field goal, and again in the high school game, you go from the 10-yard line. They got it down to about 
the six, decided to kick a field goal. Uh, they led it by three. Salt Hawks on the first play from scrimmage, Turner Wentz around the right side, took it in for the touchdown. Much needed win for the Salt Hawks. They look 110% better than they did two weeks ago. So they're getting better each and every week. Getting ready for districts. Big game coming up this Saturday, however, as they take on Salina Central in Salina. And the Salt Hawks 2-3 and three on the season. That's 0-3 at home, 2-0 and on, on, the, two and oh on the road. As you mentioned, taking on the Mustangs of Salina Central, who are 3-2. and two. We move now to the Bueller Crusaders, 4-0 oh after starting the season 0-1, oh dropping that season opener. They get the victory over Rose Hill. Not only get the victory, they roll 48-3. They've reeled off four straight. You think the Crusaders have found their groove from last I think, year? I think it's real similar last year. They, they traveled to El Dorado this weekend, should come back away with a victory there, and they're starting to, to put up some big yards and uh, they're starting to step it up again. So I think it's very similar to last year. The road to El Dorado to take on the Wildcats, who are just 1-4. and four. Different coach, same result. In the interim spot, Clint Mullen for the KU Jayhawks. However, they fall in West Virginia to the Mountaineers. That is a final of 33-14. to 14. KU now 2-3. Do you like the, the switch over, and do you think Clint did an okay job over the weekend? I think he did. I like him. I hope he is successful. What's your thoughts on him? you got to give him time. I yep. mean, just like anybody exactly. else, you've got to give him time. And I don't think that he is the full-time person that you're going to see in that spot, but you're going to see him there to maybe finish out this season until they find someone to fill that in a full capacity. KU falls to 2-3, and three, getting ready for Oklahoma State this weekend. The Cowboys, remember, are 4-1, and one, only lost in the season at the beginning against Florida State. Kansas State Wildcats getting another win. No problems with the Red Raiders in a 45-13 victory. Now 4-1 on the season. They've got time off to prepare for next week's matchup against the Sooners and Oklahoma now 4-1 and one after dropping a game to TCU. That's going to be a heck of a game. I think you can see with how Auburn did away with LSU, how strong that Auburn team was and how K-State played so well against Auburn on that Thursday night. So if you want to do score watching and take a look at it, Cats now with a little time to prepare, that's going to be a heck of a game. Time to prepare for those Sooners. Also time to prepare for the Kansas City Chiefs. They've got a bye week heading in against the matchup against the San Diego Chargers, who are 4-1 and leading the AFC West. But before we get to that game, how about the Chiefs? They looked special on Monday Night Football mm -hmm. against the Patriots. Perhaps a step back as Alex Smith falls to his former team in the Niners, 22-17. What did you think of the gutsy call by Jim Harbaugh for that fake punt that's, towards that's the end Harbaugh. of the game? That's what Harbaugh does. So uh, interesting call right there. Chiefs were respectable. Uh, kind of close, but no cigar, huh? That's the way you got to look at it, Chiefs. Hopefully get things back on track, but it'll be tough against the San Diego Chargers again, 4-1. and one. The Royals, three straight victories to open up the playoffs. That includes that wild card victory over the Athletics, and then three straight, or I guess, yeah, three straight against the uh, leading Angels. I mean, they had the best record in baseball. How about the Royals? Get the brooms out. They swept them. How about the Royals? I mean, when you think about it, they've just uh, just... Uh, Baseball is such a game of inches. A couple great out, outstanding plays in the outfield by, by by several players, and they came up with the big bats the other night to, to get the sweep. Is Osmer homered as well as Moose homering, uh, Gordon homering. Uh, they're just playing really, really well. I think they're going to do well against Baltimore. I really do. I think this is a Cinderella team. I think it's 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 going to be interesting to see if there's any dismantling in the offseason, but that's not where we're at right now. Sit back and enjoy it, Royals fans, because it's been 29 years, and it, and I tell you what, Kansas City is hungry and thirsty. Speaking of thirsty, Osmer picked up the, the uh, tab at the bar late on uh, the other night after they swept the Angels, uh, three thousand dollars on his credit card. The whole bout bar total was about fifteen thousand, and uh, they had a lot about five hundred Royals fans there as well. So nice guy. He says, "Hey, giving back to the Royals." He tweeted it. People People came, you buy and they'll come, won't they? Yeah, when you say drinks are on me, everybody's going to show up. And I heard reports of a $20,000 tab, but that's just kind of, you know, pennies that to the yours. dollar. That would have been yours, Darren. That would have that been my entire year's <laughs> salary right <laughs> there for been. Eric Hosmer. It's just a, a blip on the radar. Very generous there. Now, the last three teams to start out the playoffs 3-0 have all won the World Series. So big shoes to fill for the Kansas City Royals as they head into the ALCS against the Baltimore Orioles. For Glenn Grunwald, I am Darren Dunn. We'll catch you next time on HutchPost.com and your Eagle Communications Sports Update.